No Money But Dreams podcast is for those millennial dreamers who try to be in the top 1%. It doesn't matter what we've achieved. We wake up every morning with the mindset that we're still broke. We welcome you on our journey in search of that home run, which can change everything. Everything? Everything. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of No Money But Dreams podcast. Today, we are talking about something which is really, really dear to our hearts, something that really gets us excited. Uh, it's called You're So Lucky. That's the name of the podcast episode today. Tarek, take it away. And luck is really something that both of us struggle with. Mm -hmm. We want to be in charge of the outcome on our road to success. Definitely. So when someone says, you're so lucky we get fired up. Yeah, I mean, it, it pisses us off, to be honest with you. Exactly. So what does luck mean? Well, what does luck mean? I think I need to throw this back to when I was younger. And my mother, with all her proverbial Here we wisdom, go. <laughs> all her wisdom, there were a few things that she used to tell me when I was little. And one of the key, I would say, ideas that was ingrained or drilled into my head was that there's no such thing as coincidence. And I think there is a correlation between what people consider to be luck and coincidence. Now, when she said there's no such thing as coincidence, the end part or the second part was it, that coincidence is when opportunity meets preparation. And that was really so significant to me in my life, trying to navigate different opportunities which presented themselves and making sure that I was being prepared to take advantage of those opportunities when they did present themselves and come into my life. So when you are talking about luck and people are saying, you're so lucky, or how did you manage to do that? You're so lucky. Actually, if you're not preparing for that lucky opportunity, then you can never actually take advantage of it. And I think that's so important. And people really go through their lives trying to just base everything on serendipity and it might happen but you need to go out and chase it and if you're not chasing it then you're never going to be lucky exactly so um that was a good starting point and if you're still with us after that <laughs> story uh we're ready to take it away and and get into the weeds of things um i want to share a story that really annoys me um and it's around investing I've been investing for the last five, six years into different kinds of startups, uh, crypto, all sorts of different things. But I know that there's people out there that think I'm so lucky and I want to set the st record straight. Well, right? The floor is yours. <laughs> so for me, you know, I came to Dubai. Um, I was making less than $50,000 a year. And I'm now in a, in a fortunate kind of position to have a little bit of money on the side and I invest all of it, right? I never keep anything in the bank account. And um, that has obviously led to some failures. So I've had three, four, five, six different failures that just didn't go the way that I thought they would go. Mm -hmm. And then the you're so lucky moment comes when I um, invested in Burger 28. And there's still a couple out there that, you know, could turn positive, but no one actually takes the time to understand, well, I tried to do an extreme water sport business in Dubai, yep. fell on my face. I invested in a golf app. I invested in a coupon app. I invested in so many different things and they all failed. Yep. And I had to really learn lessons there and fell on my face before I finally had a winner. So this whole you're so lucky thing needs to be put into perspective. And when someone says you're so lucky now, I smile because I know all the hardship and all the difficult moments that I had to go through to write them off and to find more money to find another investment. Right. And, you know, same as on the life changing opportunities uh, episode, you actually need to pull the trigger to be in a trade or in in a situation to then become lucky. Yeah. And. That's something that, you know, that's one of the things that pisses me off when people... It gets you fired up. Exactly. It gets exactly. You fired I up. mean, coming back to pulling the trigger, you can't pull the trigger if you weren't prepared for the opportunity. And I think that's something which people don't take into consideration. 
what really drives me crazy with the whole you're so lucky or people in a condescending manner kind of telling you that what you've achieved was because of luck and not because of the hard work is very much the experience that I had moving back from Africa uh, when I came back to the UAE. And obviously I was trying to figure out how to start up Burger 28. And it takes a lot of effort and it takes a lot of mental power to say to stay strong and stay committed to an idea and believe in yourself when everybody around you is is kind of doubting whether you're a complete lunatic or not bro it took you a year yeah it took I, a year of talking and saying it hopefully it's going to open something is going to happen and believing in the process and then obviously i did finally open and then down the line you have a lot of people saying ah oh, well you're so lucky you have your own job you work whenever you want to work or anything like that it's, but what about all the times where I just felt like I was a nobody or all those times where I felt I was in a ditch I couldn't get out of? And those things build on you. They make you stronger and they make you capable to take advantage of another opportunity later down the line. But who are you to come to me and say, oh, well, you're so lucky you have this and this without actually looking at the backstory? Yeah. And talking about backstory, you need to actually go back a little bit and explain how you could persevere through that year because you know you went to Africa after university and you really didn't have to and that you know four or five years of grinding that really prepared you to then become lucky definitely that gave me so many skills and learning learning business in Africa I like to think of as <laughs> as my MBA yeah. in so many different ways on so many different levels and that prepared me to be able to take advantage of this opportunity, but also have the hard skin. Mm -hmm. Because in Africa, you need to have hard skin. You go through so many crazy situations day in and day out. Managing. Come on, give, give, give us a crazy story then. Crazy story. Okay, so we had, a, we had a fruit depot because obviously we were importing apples, not iPhones. We've been through this. Don't, don't make another joke. We were importing apples from South Africa into Nigeria. And we had depots all around Lagos. And one of the depots was in a place which was a little bit sketchy, you could say. And there were area boys. I know you hear about area boys in the hood or you hear about area boys in movies and things like that. But every single... And I figure this is just me coming down on the ground and trying to figure out everything. Every single container that you bring into that depot, which you own, you rent, you pay the electricity, you pay for the staff, you pay for everything, there's a tax. And this is not a government tax, no. This is the area boy tax. So I remember one day being told uh, by my partners, look, we can't keep paying this tax, you're going to have to stand up to them. And I was like, yeah, sure, it's not an issue. I can easily do that. What are you talking about? No issue. And then <laughs> I remember it was lunchtime. And one of my staff comes around and says, you need to hide. And I said, why do I need to hide? He's like, one of them's got a gun. I was like, who has a gun? And I heard all this commotion and everything. And they were so upset that I was trying to stand up to them and say, I'm not going to pay this area boy tax. That they had actually brought a gun. I had to hide and then try and renegotiate with them to get down like by 20% or something so that they were happy again. So those are kind of the struggles again, which nobody knows that I had to deal with to get to where I was today and, and where I was at that point in time to take advantage and, and create Burger 28. Another thing which I found very difficult for myself when I came back is all my friends were in great jobs, i.e. what's a great job? Working for Ernst & Young, PwC, uh, Itihad. I, I can go on with the list of different organizations. And me, what had I done? Well, I was looking to open a burger joint in what was considered Masafa, which is kind of the middle of nowhere in Abu Dhabi at that time. And it really hits your ego when you're younger. I feel when you get older, you're sure of yourself. You trust yourself. You trust your instinct. You trust your gut. But when you're younger, it's quite difficult to have somebody look at you in a way when you think a lot of yourself because you have to. Otherwise, how do you wake up in the morning and go to something which doesn't exist day in and day out? But to have somebody kind of look at you like, oh, that's cute. You're opening a burger joint. How's that going? You know what I mean? And then it not opening for months. And yeah. Months and then you and have months. to keep having the conversation about, yeah, it's going to open. And yes, it's going to open. I think all those things make you stronger. But then when somebody later down the line who was 
maybe questioning your capability at that time tells you, ah, you're so lucky, you don't even need to work. Let's, uh, let's also bring it, okay, so you finally opened, but once you opened and you were there, it didn't mean that everyone just knew Alex opened a burger shop and we need to go and eat at Alex's shop. For sure. There was a lot of hard work day in day out and i know the kind of hours that you put in to get people to come to your shop and and in the five years there's been ups and downs at both sides of of the of the spectrum and each time and i've been over this before and you know this very well similar to how you invest all your salary i if i have too much capital in the bank and i'm not deploying it i'm not opening a new branch or i'm not trying to expand or grow not only do i get bored but I start to lose my rhythm or, or my hunger in the business. So I, I try as much as possible to keep growing. And obviously we have grown to six branches so far, uh, but it's up and down. And when it's down, it can be a really, really dark place that nobody really understands how much pressure you're under and, and what you're dealing with. Yeah. So people look at you and they say you're so lucky when they think you're up. Exactly. But what happens? when you're down. Yeah, I mean, it tends to happen when you're down, nobody wants to be lucky like you, <laughs> you know? <laughs> they want their kind of luck, they exactly. don't want your kind of luck. So there's there's that side of it, uh, which really drives me, like pisses me off or aggravates me. And, and I think just everyone in general needs to take a moment and consider how they're building their own luck. Like, why are you getting involved in my luck or trying to figure out what I've done when you should be focusing on yourself? Exactly, I mean, if you focused on yourself and didn't just focus on someone else, which in itself, like, as you said, don't even do that. Just go and build your own luck or prepare for the situation when you finally can get lucky yourself. Yeah, exactly. Right? And I feel that so many people take so much time to look at others on social media or in their friendship group um, and to consider why am I not necessarily being given the same amount of luck as this individual when make your own focus day in and day out to be prepared because the opportunity will come there's opportunities everywhere and we've already spoken about it in an episode and you have to think that there will be an opportunity otherwise life is very miserable number one and number two you need to be prepared yeah and so we, we don't want to sound like dickheads right i mean the thing yeah. that is really important to us is I actually do consider myself very, very lucky. We, right? more than lucky, we're blessed. We're, we're very blessed, but I feel I'm lucky for different reasons than people may think. Yeah. Right? I feel that I've got control of where I am right now. Hmm. But what I do feel very lucky about is that when I grew up, and uh, now you can switch off. Uh, when I grew up, you know, my dad took me under his wing and exposed me to so many different kind of opportunities learning wise that, you know, from basically 12 years on, I, I was working and um, writing all the invoices, going on different kind of trips, meeting business people. Can you just like take a step back and kind of clarify, like what business was your dad in and how did you get involved? Well, he helped people uh, get visas to go abroad, big uh, German corporations and, you know, he had to go to embassies to get their visas and then send it back to these kind of corporations. And he didn't want to get involved with computers. And so, you, you know, did everything computers. Th there was me uh, writing all the invoices. And then um, he went between Berlin, Frankfurt, Bonn, Munich, and there was just not enough staff. And who better to send than your son, right? <laughs> doesn't matter what age he is or if he has got any experience. Anyways, I was three, four times a week on a train between Bonn and Frankfurt and just putting in the hours. And that teaches you so much, right? And that I feel really lucky about now because a lot of people don't have exposure to business or to hardship early in their lives, yeah. right? And when I'm now competing with these individuals for jobs or just in general, I feel I'm so lucky because I've been prepared in a way that back then I didn't understand. Back yeah. then, I thought, you know, you learn everything in school and, and that's how you get better in life. Mm. But when you really look at it, the combination of playing basketball and having to grind every single day and 
what my dad gave me really set me up for the you're so lucky moments that I'm experiencing right now. And that's more than I could have ever asked for. And that's why I feel so lucky. I think from my side, I mean, I definitely growing up in Abu Dhabi, both of my parents were entrepreneurs. Uh, at that point, they were quite older. I think my mom had me when I was 42 and my dad was like 50, like both very successful in, in what they had done. And I had a pretty cushy upbringing, to be honest with you. I went to an expensive school, uh, international school. Um, I never really had to work. I didn't have to, you know, sell papers or do anything like that. Um, but there was something which they taught me from a very young age. And that is that you can do things if you achieve. So if I didn't do well in school, I didn't get anything. So that really gave me a grit from when I was younger of, look, this is how the world works. And obviously being exposed to business at dinner time, as my mom and dad were both entrepreneurs and both running their own business, subconsciously you started to really figure that out, that if you don't put in the time and you don't put in the effort, you're not going to get a result. Yeah, you know? wait, before we go any, any further, yeah? This, I need, to, I need to also say this. When you were in university, right, you could really tell what kind of upbringing you had and what kind of past experiences you had. And we were so different at that point. Yeah, we were. Right? And had you not gone to Africa, I firmly believe we wouldn't be sitting here right now to get, together today. Because that growing up and that kind of maturity that you gained there from hustling every single day. Yeah. Then when we reunited five, six years ago, really put you in a completely different light. And that's why I said earlier, you really didn't have to go to Africa. No, I didn't. Right? And by doing that and by exposing yourself so much to so many difficult kind of moments, yeah. that's why you're now able to work 15, 16 hour days, six, seven times a week, right? You're putting in a lot more time than a lot of other people. And that's why your so lucky moments keep coming, Yeah. right? And that's a, a major kind of thing that people need to take away that, yes, for me, it was kind of like just a situation and I had to do it. There was no kind of other choice. But the great thing about you is you didn't have to do it and you still did it. Yeah. Right. So um, now let's go a little bit deeper. What are these situations that really get us fired up? What annoys us? When someone says, you're so lucky. I think, I mean, coming back to, to the idea that I, I kind of just want to send a message in, in this podcast that people should focus on themselves. I know I just said it, but I have so many circumstances with friends or, or myself where people just are so quick to jump to a conclusion and, and say that you are where you are through nothing of your own like work or, or none of the decisions that you made when you go into someone's backstory you have no idea what they had to go through whether that's emotional suffering or physical or, or anything to get to the where, where anybody is everybody has their own story you know what i mean and i think you need to be a little bit more emotionally intelligent uh, as an as an individual as a human as to what somebody has had to go through and and not just jump to conclusions in a condescending manner i mean that's really what pisses me off yeah so I shared my story earlier about uh, investing and, and what I had to go through there. The other thing that gets me really fired up is people in the corporate world, right? I got given a chance at 32 years old to run a region, right? And a lot of people around me that knew me from before in the couple of years that I had been working, they had this notion of you're so lucky yeah. that you got this job. But no one was there or no one put their hand up when I was doing four jobs at the same time the three years prior to that. Yeah. Right. And this you're so lucky thing didn't come from nothing. Like I just shared how I've been working since I was very young and I kept doing this. Right. I got. I mean, you went you went from Germany, then you went you did the professional basketball thing. And then you moved to England, not being able to speak English. Not, not really. Yeah. I started from scratch again. And whilst I was in university, I was too proud to ask my dad for money. Right. So yeah, I worked, pay for I worked three jobs at the same time and got two first class degrees Yeah. after having been completely 
abysmal in school and got a very bad degree there, right? Yeah. So I worked really, really hard. And then by luck, someone gave me a chance to, again, get an entry level job in a, in a consultancy. And from there, I moved into financial services, which I really hated at the time. And was completely different to what you had originally been doing. Then reset again, come to the UAE, right? And then work two, three years as hard as I can, three, four different jobs, exposing myself into each different department to be so lucky and get that opportunity, yeah. right? So this, I, I want everyone to go out and think, you know, how can I create my own kind of you're so lucky moments? Yeah. How can you create your own luck? And how can you focus your time on yourself instead of looking at what others have or the successes that others have benefited from now? Because there is no benefit for you to think like that. Not at all. People need to, you know, get away from looking at other people. You know, Instagram and all these kind of different social media. I think social media really, I mean, it, you have to control your usage on social media. And you have to put everything into perspective of what you're seeing because what people are portraying on social media is obviously the best version of themselves all the time, the richest version of themselves, the most beautiful version of themselves, et cetera, et cetera, as you go through yeah. the long list. But deep down, you got to be honest with yourself, right? You got to go and say, what can I do to create my own kind of luck? And what situation am I, am I in right now? And where do I want to get to? And it may not happen in the next two, three months. But if you keep your head down and keep working at something, at some point, this lucky moment presents itself. Yeah. If you're putting in the time, you're preparing, that opportunity will come and you'll be able to seize the opportunity. But you can't do that if you're just spending your whole time looking at other people seizing other opportunities. Yeah. And this is kind of like what we want people to take away from this episode, right? Focus on yourself and uh, work on your own kind of you're so lucky moments and really look at how can I be called you're so lucky, right? Yeah. Because it gets us fired up, but at the same time, it's nice if someone, you know, says to you, you're so lucky and they don't know the, un the whole story. Yeah, they you don't, just smile. You just smile. Yeah. You know, you just... And I think that kind of that kind of conviction in ourselves and feeling comfortable has come a bit more with age, right? When someone would say that to you when you're in your 20s, you're like, but you don't understand. I'm working three fucking jobs. Like, oh, you got a first? You're so lucky, man. I got a 2-1, which I did actually get a 2-1. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's like, yes, I got a first and I worked three jobs and I was eating shit every single day, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that would get more fired up. Now you, the fact that we can sit here, have this conversation and kind of share that mentality with other people makes us, it makes it clear to ourselves that we feel comfortable with it and we can just smile. Yeah, but for me, throughout this process, right? I mean, in the last kind of 10 years, throughout this process, I never lost the understanding that I will make it at some point, right? Yeah. And I don't need outside validation to um, feel like I'm making it. Yeah. I know that if I do X, Y, Z, I'm going to get there. Yeah. Right? And, and I appreciate that about you. And me, myself, I can't say that that's exactly how I am. Like, mm. I have an insecurity inside of me because I never had an actual job that I need to prove that, like, I'm being successful in a way. And that comes from, like, buying an expensive watch or buying a nice car. Yes, I love cars, but it's also a statement like, don't worry, guys. Yeah, I, I am successful. And I've been working on that. And I think more and more, I am feeling more comfortable within myself that I don't need to show my success to anybody. I just need to focus on what makes me happy and the end goal. And those are the thoughts you control in your mind. And that's to come, sorry to come back to social media, but if you don't use social media properly, if you're not like consuming it, I would say responsibly, you can get negative thoughts in your mind of like inadequacies and stuff like that, which have zero benefit to reaching your end goal. Mm. And, you know, you say that you respect me for this, but at the same time, you know, if you are seeking outside validation, then something is wrong from the beginning. 100%. And, you know, uh, you say that openly about yourself, but I think a lot of people and including myself, everyone thinks like that at some point when you're going through social media or, or whatever. Yeah. Right. The important thing is, yeah, OK, we acknowledge this, but where do we go from here? Right. How do we deep down? Yeah. It's not like how you talk to your friends or to your spouse or to whoever you're speaking to. How for you yourself 
Can you go and say, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to do this and we're going to see where my so your so lucky moment comes. Yeah. Right. And that's what if more people focused on that instead of looking at other people and comparing yourself to other people, if you're just saying, look, I'm going to do this for the next four or five years and I'm something good is going to come out. Yeah. No one knows the end result. Right. But I firmly believe if you keep your head down, you just keep going, keep going, keep going. Something will reveal itself. I and do, it, 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 we don't even have to believe like we're a testament to that yes. day in day out just trying as hard as possible to be the best at what you do and and to reach an end result i'll, I'll share one more funny story um <laughs> you know i i always say i can't work in germany anymore right because yeah. in germany people care how you get from point a to b you have to take that straight line is that the mentality there that that's the mentality mm. right and when you when i went to the uk People only care about how that you get to point B. Yeah, just the end result. Exactly. Yeah. And I really feel like if people cared less about what B is going to look like, yeah, and they just kept pushing whatever and find a way, yeah, whatever way that may be, there will be a point B. There will be a you're so lucky kind of moment. Yeah, agreed. So let's wrap it up. Sure. So I think to wrap it up, the first thing is that everyone is creating their own destiny uh, and instead of commenting on someone else focus on what you're doing day in and day out don't judge people yeah i think that's number one don't judge people and don't judge what they had to do to get to where they are um and the process doesn't really matter to anyone at the end of the day yeah like you were saying just be relentless uh, on your goal and, and be clear what you want to achieve and just work towards it day in day out and and you'll get there and strive for that you're so lucky moment yeah and just smile and when they do say it just smile thank exactly. you so much guys have a lovely day thank you for tuning in thanks for listening peace